Next, for the man behind one of the largest government data hacks of all time. Joining us now is Paul Rosenzweig, R Street Senior Fellow, National Security and Cybersecurity. He's also former Department of Homeland Security official. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so what is next for, uh, for Mr. Assange? Well, he's going to start by fighting extradition to the United States. The U.S. and the U.K. have an extradition treaty that has a political crimes exception to it. He's going to try and come in under that. If he fails, he's going to come to the United States and be tried. Right, and so, Paul, a lot of people are scratching their heads. Why, after seven years, did this finally happen now? What happened to, the, to his relationship with the Ecuadorians that essentially soured, that essentially he was able to be turned over? Well, two things happened. I think the first is that there was a change in government in Ecuador to a more moderate government that's seeking to uh, restore some of the ties that have frayed between the United States and Ecuador in the past. And the second thing, which is probably should be the first, is that uh, Assange just has overstayed his welcome. I mean, I don't know about you, but when people stay in my house for more than three days, I start wanting <laughs> them to leave. Well, especially yeah. when they come out with the giant beer like that we saw with Julian Assange today. That, that, that was an, uh, certainly an, an impressive look. Um, Paul, I'm curious about how the image of Julian Assange has changed over the years, right? If we think back to the Obama administration, it seemed like people uh, on the left wing were more more okay with WikiLeaks, despite the fact that it came out during the Obama administration. And Republicans people, hated him. Republicans absolutely hated him. But, you know, then fast forward to the election of 2016, uh, you have people like Roger Stone talking about, uh, about WikiLeaks. You have um, um, even people within uh, President Trump's inner circle talking about WikiLeaks. Trump up to now is you know, been quiet about this. His, his only comments recently about Julian Assange have been, I don't know anything about the guy. But what do you make of the political shift in, in Washington about uh, Assange and, and, and really who he is an ally of? Well, it's another case of situational ethics, I think, which is unfortunate. Uh, you can take the view that Assange is a hero, or you can take the view that, that he's a tool of, of the Russian government, uh, but you can't say both things at the same time, uh, at least not make any sense. I do think it is the case that as we've come to learn more about Mr. Assange, the general sense has gone from hero to agent or tool, and that is probably a, an accurate assessment. Well, I still, think. there are some people, uh, uh, especially uh, on the uh, left-wing side of the media, who are, are saying that this is a, sets a dangerous precedent, calling him a, a journalist, uh, and, and that you know the U.S. and, and other uh, foreign governments going after journalists sets a dangerous precedent. What do you make of that? I think that that's wrong, and I think that the indictment is, in fact, very respectful of the First Amendment in the United States. It doesn't charge him with receiving classified information. It doesn't charge him with publishing classified information. It charges him with conspiring with uh, Chelsea Manning to steal that. It's as if um, you, uh, your source had gone to the door of a house and couldn't open it and, and said to the journalist, hey, can you help me break down the door? And you said, yeah, sure, let me go find a, a lockpick. Being a journalist doesn't excuse criminality. And uh, that's a fine line, but it's a really important line to keep in mind. Uh, Paul, what sort of charges could uh, Mr. Assange actually face? And would there be a chance that he might be extradited here to the United States? Well, he's been charged with a computer crime that is violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act by attempting to access without authorization a, com a computer to which he'd been denied access. In this instance, the specification is that he was working with uh, Manning to try and crack a password that had been hashed. What about Sweden? And what charges could he face in Sweden? Well, the Swedes had some sexual... Uh, assault charges, but they dropped those about a year ago because he was not present. I don't know enough Swedish law to know whether they can revive those at this point, and, and I certainly don't know enough about Swedish politics to know whether they will want to. What do you think his future looks like? I mean, is this, is this going to be a future spent behind bars in the U.S., in the U.K.? Well, the single crime that he's been charged with here so far only has a five-year criminal penalty. So he's not going to spend his life in jail, even if he's convicted of that crime. Uh, that doesn't mean that the government won't supersede the charges 
and bring additional criminal charges against him, which might have longer possible sentences, I expect that he's going to be in jail for uh, at least a few years at this point. And on top of all that, Paul, what do you think about the future of WikiLeaks? Can the site survive without its most famous person spearheading the organization? Do you see a future still with WikiLeaks in it? Well, I think there's always going to be something like WikiLeaks. If not WikiLeaks itself, then other uh, areas in which uh, information can be disclosed in a confidential manner. Uh, for good or for ill, that's the nature of the network, and it allows for anonymity like that. Uh, WikiLeaks's brand has taken a big hit, both from Assange's personal conduct and from their involvement in attempting to influence the uh, 2016 election and taking stolen documents from the Russians. So I think WikiLeaks is going to kind of suffer quite a bit. But uh, the idea of WikiLeaks, the idea of, of anonymous repositories of information is not going to die. Paul Rosenzweig, R Street Senior Fellow, National Security and Cybersecurity. Thanks so much for joining us on Chatter today. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. All right, don't go anywhere, guys. Coming up here on Between Bells is streaming live.